Hi, I'm Ben Hanawal, Product Specialist here at Atlas Copco, and today we're going to be talking about the Power Focus 6000. Let's take a look down in the software. Today we're going to be talking about how to program a field bus configuration and a connection to a field bus from the Tools Talk 2 software. In some of my previous videos, we've been doing all of our programming from the web HMI connected to the controller just through the factory Ethernet port. With this video, we are actually going to be doing all of our programming through Tools Talk 2. So keep that in mind when you're programming a field bus. It's going to be one of the two items that you actually need the Tools Talk 2 software for. The other would be programming the soft PLC. So, when we are connected with our controller, you can tell we're connected up here. You can see there's no line through it. If it was disconnected, you would see a line through the controller. So we have a good connection to our tightening program. And what we're actually going to do from there is we are just going to go over to our field bus tab. So you're going to see over on the far right, there's this tab labeled field bus and soft PLC. There's this overview tab, field bus and soft PLC. Now, for this video, we're just going to be talking about the overview tab and the field bus tab. Now my controller already has an Ethernet IP card installed in it. So at this point in time, typically a customer would say, hey, we need help getting a system set up and running. And there's a couple of things we want to keep in mind as we're connecting. So this is going to be our active connection status with the PLC. So until that says online, they're not going to show a good connection to the controller. So that's going to be actively updating. Right now I'm not connected to a PLC, which is why it shows offline. The field bus type, this is going to be selected. If it's undefined, it's just because we're messing around training or something like that. But we have our six options that are supported with the PowerFocus 6000. So for this example, I have a Ethernet IP card. Update interval. So update interval is basically the scan rate or the update time of how often we're updating the inputs and outputs on our field bus card. Typically what I recommend for update interval is to match the scan rate of the PLC. So for instance, if a PLC is scanning at a rate of once every 50 milliseconds, I typically recommend that you mirror that. So try to mirror that update interval with the scan rate of the PLC. We have our lock tool on field bus offline. And the lock tool on field bus offline is basically exactly what it says. If the field bus is offline, it's going to lock the tool out. So keep that in mind. If you want the tool to be disabled, that's what you're going to turn on there. Now let's talk about red result handshake. This is a very important variable to talk about. The reason it's very important is by simply turning on the red result handshaking, um, we can cause some issues with reporting over the field bus. Essentially what red result handshaking is, is every time we receive an OK tightening from the controller, that is going to send through a variable to the PLC and they're going to increment it. Now, if I turn on red result handshaking, what's going to happen is, is we're going to receive an OK tightening and that OK tightening will require us to receive a variable back from the PLC acknowledging that they have received it. So what can happen is, is if you turn this on without using that variable programmed from the PLC, we're going to send that OK variable permanently until we receive that bit back, even if it's not programmed in. So make sure that you only use red result handshaking if you have the variables in your bitmap as well. So. Set by network, Ethernet IP does have the option to have the PLC send us the actual IP address, so keep that in mind. If we do want them to set the IP address, we can just turn that to on. And then we also have sync on task selected. So what this means is that if you change the task while on the virtual station while we're connected to the PLC, it's going to resync the task that's assigned. Now. I want to talk about the IP address. So we do obviously need to put in an IP address to our PLC. Very, very common mistake. If I put in an IP address and then the customer, for example, says we don't use a gateway, you'll notice something's going to happen. I'm going to push that configuration and you're going to see an unexpected configuration error. Even if you do not use a gateway, you need to have something in here, whether it's 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 or an actual gateway, you do need to have something in the gateway tab or you will get this unexpected error. So if I make that change, push that change, 
you'll notice the error goes away. So the size, to and from the field bus or PLC. So overall, this is the overall size from the controller to the PLC. So keep in mind, if you have multiple tools running, so multiple, let's say six tools running, what you would do is you would have six multiplied by eight. If you have one tool running and you have your standard bitmap set up as an eight by eight bitmap, it's just gonna be eight by eight here. So for example, if we wanted to run two tools, I would expand it to 16 bytes overall. Next, we have our virtual station configuration mapping. Before I get into this, I actually wanna to touch on our bit mapping itself. So if we come over here and go to the field bus tab, you'll notice I have a specific signal configuration. So this is what is generally referred to as the bitmap. So if I wanted to say, you know, create a test bitmap, I can create a test bitmap. And this is really where you're gonna put in all of your different variables. For example, you know, I wanna put in, you know, keep in mind we're on our two controller, so this is gonna be our inputs. Maybe we wanna have an identifier, right? So I can search and I can have an external identifier come in. Maybe I can make it, 40 bits and then add it in. What you'll notice is it fills that in. We can also add some additional variables. Maybe we can add disable the tool. Very common question. Hey Ben, I don't see enable tool. We also on the PF6000 have added these converters onto some. So if I take disable tool and I invert it, now I've just made the enable tool signal. So keep that in mind as you're creating the bitmap. Lots of different variables in here. I'm not going to go through each individual variable. This is just to get you started and get you familiar with setting up the bitmap. Again, same thing from the controller. That would be our outputs to the PLC. We can clear the results. We can say lots of different things. We can send our final torque value, all sorts of different things. And so once we've created this bitmap, we've got our test bitmap created, we can come back here. We've got our general field bus settings. And then we need to make sure that we assign the virtual station to the bit mapping. So if I click the add button, I'm going to select my virtual station. I'm going to select my airbag secure because that's the one I'm going to use for this example. And then I'm going to assign the bitmap. So you see my test bitmap in there. I can click add and you'll notice that it's only an eight byte by eight byte bitmap. So you can see I have eight additional bytes that are open. So what I could do if I had two tools maybe, I could say virtual station one and use the same bitmap. So you can use the same bitmap on multiple tools and you can kind of see a nice little visual representation of what that's gonna look like. Keep in mind with Tools Talk 2, you're always gonna wanna push those changes after you make them. So make the changes, push the changes, and then from there, we're gonna be good to go. So that is kind of the crash course on setting up a field bus. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. If you do have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your Atlas Copco marketing team and we can try and get you some answers. <music>